Thank you. Good morning. Uh, this morning, we want to share for the first time uh, our, a summary of our top-line Phase 2B clinical trial uh, results. Uh, presbyopia, as we all know, <clears throat> there's no FDA-approved therapeutic for this indication, and it has been called uh, the Holy Grail. The team that's been involved, there were three co-founders. Dr. Lee Nordan passed away about three years ago. Uh, Dr. Horn is here today. Medical Advisory Board and MD consultants, several are, uh, uh, of you are here today. Uh, these folks have been very active and very much involved and made significant co uh, contributions. <clears throat> Dr. Mark Odridge, uh, in particular, deserves a shout out, as does Aura, who was our CRO for, the, for, for this trial. How does this drug work? This drug is a meiotic, but it works very different than other meiotics. Um, we would say that pilocarpine and other meiotics, per our view, have what we would call a, uh, an accommodative mechanism of action. That means you clearly get um, a pinhole effect. You will clearly get some, uh, an improvement in near vision and reading, but some patients uh, can often experience a, uh, a, a decrease in distance vision. <clears throat> The breakthrough that we believe that we have, uh, we believe we are the first and only to have what we would call a depth of field mechanism of action. And by that, you get both your near uh, vision reading capability without sacrificing distance vision in this kind of seamless transition, if you will. Phase 2B clinical trial design, randomized trial, very rigorous. Uh, we actually used two versions of drug, and we did this because we weren't sure which version would, would be the best. So we had version A of this acyclidine, which is our meiotic, combined with the low-dose um, cycloplegic to help, help deal with accommodation. Um, and then additionally, Dr. Horn uh, thought a lot about this and was able to bring in some proprietary parts of our vehicle. So we also tested a cyclidine only without tropicamide. The third arm was the vehicle. Uh, we put the, this is a one day trial. This is meant to be a one day therapy. Patients come in in the morning, they have the drops uh, put in their eyes. They have baseline measurements, 30 minutes, one hour, three, five, seven, hours. Um, and additionally, of course, we took data uh, at all points. Additionally, we had a very broad range. We've always tried to target a very broad range as far as inclusion, um, ex exclusion criteria, not just trying to treat um, uh, plano presbyopes. How do we do? Monocular vision per the protocol testing, uh, three-line improvement. That is a significant bar per FDA guidance, and any drug will, ha will have to meet that bar. Uh, I'm here today to tell you that we have met that bar. If you look at the MITT group, both drugs performed nicely, um, very low p-values, very um, strong statistical significance here, and that was achieved. <clears throat> We also looked at two-line improvement. Again, I think everybody here knows if you can, can have a two-line improvement in near vision, uh, that is significant for these patients. They will be very happy. And if you look again, both drugs did this. In fact, if you look at the bottom, the uh, uh, PRXB version had about 50% of gaining two lines uh, at seven hours. We also collect the data on binocular use. You know, we, we believe this will be a, a binocular drug. And if you look at the uh, ITT group, which, rec which represents all comers, if you look at between 2020 to 2040 plus two, that group you see uh, a robust 63% uh, were in this range for uh, seven hours. Pupillometry, very important for us because, again, we are um, uh, um, um, inducing meiosis. We believe the pupil size is important, not the only factor. You have to deal with accommodation, as we've talked about. But the data in terms of a biomarker, very strong correlation with our near vision improvement. And you see at one hour, about one and a half was the mean size of the pupil. And even at seven hours, um, you're still under a mean of, of two millimeters. <clears throat> What about low luminance, um, esophic uh, vision? We saw no significant change, very important. Uh, additionally, as we've talked about, we think you cannot compromise distance vision, and we saw no significant change here with, uh, with photopic best corrected distance visual acuity. 
In summary, <coughs> we had no serious adverse events. Uh, we did have some adverse events, of course, you would expect, some very mild uh, um, discomfort. And again, we met the primary endpoints with very low p-values and statistical significance. In summary, I would say that we believe we are the only drug that has this depth of field mechanism of action, this, this seamless transition, if you will, very, very important. We have targeted by design a very large range, not just plain old presbyopes. We're, we're trying to go big uh, um, in terms of the market opportunity and go for the 85% of the bell-shaped curve, not the 2 or 3%. We believe our phase 2B data is quite compelling. We think we hit a home run, and we think we have a potential game changer uh, for the treatment of presbyopia. Thank you very much.